This week, Alex moves forward on the mizzenmast upstairs, and a new member of the crew comes to help hang Arabella's planking. And then Steve will open a few presents off the wish list from a couple of our generous patrons. is now on rollers, which is great. I can just move it by hand now. The plan now is to cut off all these cookies that they built up on the bottom of the mast. And this is probably gonna end up being the top of the mast anyways. There are what it looks like to be a couple of drifts in here. So I think I'm gonna take the sawzall to here and cut cookie by cookie and try to figure out what's in here and how to take this apart as best we can. in there. The last one might need a little persuasion. hammer right now. that in there. But this uh, planing footage is starting to get a little bit monotonous for everybody. <laughs> I do enjoy it though. This is uh, one of the tasks that I really like. But speaking of this project and truing the mast, a lot of uh, the machinists on the channel uh, pointed out that what we made were actually called cat's heads, um, which I had never heard of before. Um, but pretty cool. Um, so they're used for basically steadying an uneven piece of material. So obviously for machinists, it would be metal um, so that they can true it exactly like what we're doing on here. So uh, I guess we did build some steady rests after all. So thank you for those that mentioned that and pointed that out. It was uh, definitely neat to hear. The mast is now true all the way down to the end. So that end is out. We got all the pins out of the um, end of it as well. And now it's time to start figuring out what's going on with these uh, little rot spots and some of the little uh, graving pieces that we need to put in. So there's not much in terms of rot spots. There's just, um, there's this and this. We're not really sure where they came from, but there's um, a little bit in here that is concerning. So we're just gonna tear that out and uh, 
put in a graving piece, so probably just like a, a nice little diamond right in here. And then same thing over here. Um, and then at the very end, we just have a couple uh, places where there were um, through bolts um, at the top of the mast. And like we said before in the last episode, the mast, uh, we're gonna use it upside down. Uh, it just made more sense with what we've got going on here. We'll put all those little defects at the bottom so that that's not going through the small diameter of the top of our mast. Uh, so I gotta figure out something here to cut these accurately. And I think Steve had a good idea so that we have a reference point is gonna be to make up a platform that can sit on here so that, that way I can use this to use a little square to square down into the hole and make sure that I get a good bottom to that. And I can basically make two uh, little platforms underneath that will rest against the mast and hold this tight. And then I will just clamp it to a couple boards underneath and that'll give me a good working platform to measure things off of and to work off of and run the router and whatever we need to do. So I'm gonna work on making this um, and then we're gonna start digging those out and I will plug those. And now for plugging those, we have a bunch of material that we can use. Um, one of the big things is since the mast tapers at the end, we can just cut off little pieces off of there and we can fit those right in here, which is great because it'll be the exact same wood. It'll be running in the same orientation. And then for the dowels down there, we might just do it in cedar. It's not really something that really matters all that much. It's gonna be down below deck. It'll be dry. Uh, there'll be glue in there, so it'll be good. And it's not anywhere that is going to be down in the bilge. It's just gonna be below deck. So whatever's down in the bilge is actually gonna be sitting on the mast step and the tenon that goes through the mast step is gonna get sealed so that that has no issues with it either. As you may have heard in the background, outside in the driveway, Steve was still motoring away on making the plywood for the bulkheads. And off screen here, they both had some help from a volunteer that wanted to stay off camera. He's making up the rest of the copper rivets that will soon be used to finish up the planking and to attach the bilge stringers inside the boat.
making the mask look like a hedgehog. Yeah, right? <laughs> Alex finished plugging the holes with the cedar dowels, but before he could get to the graving pieces, there was a special arrival to the boathouse. Carolyn is a boat builder that will be around over the next months to help Steve finish the planking. So the first step was just to show her around the place and get her oriented. And these are your grandfather's tools? Yeah, some of them are grandfather's, great-grandfather's, great-great-great-grandfather's. Have you guys been in Western Mass for a little while? Or? My family, I'm fifth generation on this chunk of property. Wow! Yeah. That's pretty cool. So we've got the original house here that I'm in now, uh -huh. and then my mom's house is next door, and then my grandparents' house is next door than that. That's really so cool. So when I was a kid and I walked out my back door, my grandparents <laughs> lived on my right, and my great-grandparents lived on my left. Oh, man. Yeah. like. Whoa! We don't have to build a single door. Whoa! We got them all. They just need like what? some love and a fresh coat of varnish. That's a nice thing too. Yeah. Nice thing. We got a screaming deal on that. One of our That's friends beautiful. tipped us off for it being on eBay for 250 bucks and That's Cape it? Yeah. Oh my right? gosh. You should put a thousand before that 250. It's not even rusty. It was a little rusty when we got it, but. It's beautiful. Yeah. And you've got what? How old is Victoria? Uh, she was built in 1926-27. So you've got 100-year-old mahogany furniture. Sure, yeah. Like, okay. And we've got, like, Good. the panels, the frames oh, that they nice. fit into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to do the interior, I mean, we, awesome. we need to find a spot where that fits. Totally, 100%. <laughs> and then just figure out which of the doors yeah, belong yeah. to it. Um, but yeah, we've got treasure trove. And then that's all paneling. Cool. Did you give her a binnacle too? Yeah. Nice. I mean, we're just going to make the rudder to fit. Perfect. Oh, that's awesome. If you're like, man, I wish I had a staging plank. There it is. There it is. Great. Um, and behind that is just a whole mountain of locusts. Like, hey, do you guys want a 27 inch thickness planer? Yes. And we're like, yeah. Oh, man. So this was made in Boston in the 1800s, late 1800s. But we don't have the electrical supply out here to run it, so we got given a 1947 flathead industrial Chrysler. We literally have a 90 horsepower thickness planer. Well, it likes oak then. Yeah, and we were, I mean, we're lucky with being able to just go cut all the oak we want for the most part. Sure. Um, sure. So, like, being able to put on 12 inch garbards. Yeah, yeah. I really like the, the hook pen nibbon. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, did you do the frames and then the cross bracing and then pattern for planks? Yep. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah, so the bronze straps are let into the frames. And then there is not like a super ton to eat in the house. Okay. So I figured you and I could go do groceries. That'd be great. And you could get the things that you want to be eating. That sounds great. Um, and we can figure that out. And that, that would probably basically be today. Cool. Um, and then tomorrow we can wake up, have breakfast, and, and actually get to work. Sweet. I might take a long look at your plans. Yeah. Hi, my name is Carolyn Corbin. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. And we have a mutual friend in common. Uh, my friend Andrew, who's on the Rosalind project, introduced me to Steve and Alex. So I came out to Acorn to Arabella for a few weeks to help them get their planking on. Um, I started with boats uh, after college. During college, I actually sailed tall ships for quite a few years. And while I was sailing, I met up with Tony Finicaro, who's a shipwright out of Maine. And I decided that I really liked the work that he did. I worked with him in some of the yards on the tall ships I sailed on. And then I actually apprenticed under Tony for three summers and spent a lot of time learning from him and just working on different tall ships and different schooners, doing everything from plank replacements to worm shoe replacements to interior deck work, deck house work. Um, and I really enjoyed the work. So I kind of made a commitment to stop sailing and just full-time focus on the carpentry and the shipwright work. Um, so I attended the, Pacific, the Northwest School of Wooden Boat Building in Port Townsend, Washington. 
Uh, I spent the months of COVID there. The school ran for 12 months with an interruption. And there's a motorcycle. <laughs> uh, and there we covered everything from drafting and lofting to full on boat building, boat repair, interior joinery. Uh, we did everything as an overview, um, and it really complemented well with the stuff that I had worked with with Tony and the other tall ships. So when I came out, I feel, I feel pretty confident now of having a general knowledge of what boats are. Um, and it's really nice to be able to come here to this boat. And these guys have done so much reading and so much work, and it's really cool just to chat with them because the little knowledge that I have from the East Coast, a little bit from the Chesapeake Bay, a little bit from the Pacific Northwest now, and then everything that they have read um, I feel really lucky to be here because it's just flushing out more ways to do things because the best thing about boat building is that there's always a different way to do it and it's really fun to kind of get my hands on a different project and just try new things. The next day Alex got back to the mast, cleaning up the cedar plugs and getting started on the graving pieces. In the boat Steve got Carolyn going on cleaning up the area that will soon end up behind the bilge stringers. That meant cleaning off the dried dolphinite around the frames and taking any ledges off the inside of the planks to keep the crud from building up over time. How goes the battle? Really well. You know, the dental tools. Yeah, I mean, hogged it off. Gonna come back with some 40 grit and just smooth them out. Smooth yep. them out a little bit so they don't catch anything and trap anything. Yeah, I'd imagine you're not taking much off, huh? No, I mean, where it's starting to take a little more shape, they were a lot prouder, but like that yeah. here, it's almost nothing. Um, and I'm just going one down from where the build stringers are going to go because once they're on, it's going to be more annoying to, to get, get up there. Perfect. So believe it or not, I don't really consume much YouTube. I just create for it. <laughs> um, but I am told that unboxing videos are a very popular thing. And uh, since we put the wish list up, a few things have been purchased from that and they have arrived. So we'll take, uh, take a crack here at uh, doing an unboxing. So. Major thanks to Robert Henderson for this one. And these, if I'm not mistaken, should be the foot pumps. Awesome. So these are the foot pumps for the galley. So one will pump fresh water, one will pump salt water. Uh, we're not going to have pressurized water in the boat. This is much simpler and easier. Uh, so those are good. And they, when we get to planning out the galley, we can figure out exactly where those need to be and how much counter space and where the plumbing is going to go. And then really exciting are some Akin boat plans. So these are plans for the potential tender. Uh, we've got three plans that we want to eventually get. This is the first one. Let me make sure I got this right. And that is from Bob Randall, who is one of our longtime patrons. So thank you, Bob. I'm really excited about this. Uh, so let's pop open these plans and take a peek. So here's one of the foot pumps out of the box. And that'll get mounted probably so it's hidden behind. And then you just push your foot and make the water pump. So those would be great. And here we have the boat plans. And when I started looking for designers, I loved Atkins' tagline, motto, whatever you want to call it. 
individualized designs for unregimented yachtsmen. And I was like, that's us. We are super unregimented. So, if I'm not mistaken, these should be Fay. Dear Steve, thank you for your order of plans for Fay. The drawings are enclosed. I'm delighted you are to build an Ekin boat. As you know, all designs are well proven if built as designed. When finished, I would appreciate a photo for my website, and if so moved, photos as building. Let me hear any time. Best wishes and stay safe. Pat Akin. Man, that's a little simpler lofting than for uh, the Ingrid for Arabella, just huh? Just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Might have been easier to learn on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. No, exactly. It's just a heck of a lot more complicated version of it. Cool. So Akin says, Fay, in case you wish to know, is a fairy who lived, and I like to think yet lives, among the reed stems of that magic lake from which arose the sword of King Arthur. And when you tack the charm and the elfishness, the lightness and the mystery of a fairy's name to a tiny boat, well, then you are upon the track of romance even before you go afloat. And so Fay should be a very good name for a boat. Ten-foot dinghy, find it is exceptionally fine little craft, quite exceptionally enough to carry the charming name of Fay. Ten feet overall, with a water line of nine foot two, breadth of four, and draft of six inches. Dimensions spell a wholesome and burdensome hull. I think she's a good contender. So I'd like to get the plans for the other two, and then we can uh, do a rough lofting and possibly do like a cardboard mock-up even and see how they fit on the boat and how all that's going to go together. Because maybe if we drop the house an inch and raise the boom an inch, we can get one of these boats onto the housetop, which would be really, really ideal place to carry it. Uh, and being able to build the tender to go with the boat and build them at the same time, kind of uh, at least keep them in mind is going to be really helpful to make sure that we've got a really good place to stow the dinghy and a really good dinghy to go with Arabella. And the plan still stands is to make her out of the cedar and mahogany that we salvaged from Victoria, which I think would be a, a great fitting contribute to the, the last little bits of good wood from Victoria. So thank you very much to everyone who has donated to the wish list so far. We've got a few more things ordered and they're on their way. And uh, thank you so much for the support. We could not be doing this without you. Thanks everyone for watching and come back next week to see how those graving pieces turn out. And also next week, the first of the bilge stringers are going in. So we'll see you next Friday. Right. So, who are you and why are you here? Yeah, so I'm Carolyn. My name's Carolyn Corbin. Just as the, yeah. <laughs> Doop -doo -doo. At least you're not near an airfield. What? At least you're not near an airfield. We are actually. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not commercial, it's like huge military planes. Great. Great. Shall we start again?